This is Tommy, and his parents say he's very intelligent. Wait, what does that even mean? Well, a majority of people would assume he gets very good grades in school. But even though this is a sign of intelligence, it isn't the only defining factor of what makes someone smart. IQ tests, for instance, are a common way to test intelligence, but most of these tests examine proficiency in spatial, verbal or mathematical intelligence. American psychologist Howard Gardner thought this was strange, as there are many ways people can be intelligent. He then developed his theory of multiple intelligences, which describes nine areas where people can be proficient. Number one, naturalist intelligence. Think of Katniss Everdeen from The Hunger Games, Chuck Noland from Castaway, and Julie from Julie of the Wolves. With a keen eye to detail and easily noticing changes in their surroundings, people with high naturalist intelligence would be very good at surviving in the wild. They have a cunning ability to distinguish between different animals, plants, clouds, rocks, etc. In today's modern world, they are able to distinguish between different kinds of makeup, cars, smartphones, and other items. Number two, musical intelligence. Having a high musical intelligence indicates you're very good at things to do with sounds. These can include characteristics such as rhythm, tone, and pitch. If you've got a high musical intelligence, you're good at recognizing, creating, and reproducing music. You might even have a high mathematical intelligence too as these two things often involve similar thought processes. If you happen to play an instrument and have a high musical intelligence, you're probably quite good at playing by ear. Number three, logical mathematical intelligence. People with a high score on logical mathematical intelligence are good at abstract symbolic thought, using letters in formulas to indicate relationships between factors, and reasoning skills such as inductive and deductive reasoning. They are good at considering hypotheses, carrying out calculations, and quantifying data. Number four, existential intelligence. People with a high existential intelligence are good philosophical thinkers. They are good at philosophizing and thinking about questions that might not have a real definite answer. They have a sensitivity towards the deeper questions of life and like challenging related concepts. They're not easily confused by their own feelings. Number five, interpersonal intelligence. People with a high interpersonal intelligence are often good at communicating with others. They are good at noticing shifts in others' moods and motives, as well as taking multiple perspectives on a subject. They often score high on empathy and do well in socially orientated work, such as teaching, social work, and acting. Number six, bodily kinesthetic intelligence. People with this type of intelligence love movement. They have high body awareness and good motor skills. Because of that, they often excel in activities that involve body movement, such as sports and dance. They learn best by doing and are keen to figuring things out through experimentation. Number seven, linguistic intelligence. People high in linguistic intelligence are better than average at understanding subtle differences in meaning. They tend to pick up new words and languages quicker. It's a widely shared skill, often found in people that work in journalism, teaching, or even public speaking. Furthermore, people with a high linguistic intelligence tend to have a broader vocabulary than average. Children and young adults with a high linguistic intelligence tend to be drawn to language-orientated activities, such as reading, writing, word puzzles, and telling stories. Number eight. Intrapersonal intelligence. People with a high intrapersonal intelligence are good at understanding their own feelings and thoughts and working them to achieve their goals. They are good at motivating themselves from the inside out without any visible or physical reward. It involves more than just understanding and planning their goals, but also a less definite appreciation of the human condition. People with a high intrapersonal intelligence are often good philosophers and psychologists. Number nine, spatial intelligence. People with a high spatial intelligence are good at things that require mental manipulations of physical perspectives. These people tend to be very skilled at map reading, jigsaw puzzles, and seeing or drawing objects and situations from a different perspective, without necessarily having seen it from that perspective. 
They do not easily get lost, and are often good at working their way around a maze. Spatial reasoning, image manipulation, and graphic and artistic skills are often well developed in people with a high spatial intelligence. People with this skill are often good at sailing, being a pilot, sculpting, painting, or designing architectural features and spaces. Young people with good spatial intelligence are often drawn to visually stimulating activities, like drawing. So, those are the nine types of intelligence. Which types of intelligence do you feel describe you the best? Comment below, and don't forget to like and subscribe.